Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Tuesday, September 13th, 2022. I cannot believe we're in mid-September already. But this is the SOS Show with James Lott Jr. I am James Lott Jr., Super Organizer. And this guest has been on before, a while back. Um, she's somebody, one of my favorite people out there. She is a professional certified coach, professional, excuse me, certified productivity leadership coach, certified professional organizer. And I've had her on when she was the president of the National Association of Productivity and Organizer Professionals, my girl, Ellen Fay. Hi, Miss Ellen. Hey, my guy, James Lott. I'm so <laughs> glad to be back with you. I'm glad to have you back, too. And she has a book out. It's called Productivity for How You're Wired. So we're going to talk about that, what the book's about, the impetus of the book, what we're talking about inside the book, and all of that. But first, I always do my thanks and gratitude. I've been doing it for almost 400 episodes. I cannot believe I'm heading towards 400, Ellen. 400 um at eight years um so my thanks and gratitude actually because it was grandparents day yesterday or two days ago and i'm a grandparent so i want to give a shout out and thanks and gratitude to all my grandchildren to zayden scarlett rylan trenton and soon to be preston coming january 2023 um you guys are the lights of my life i never pictured myself being a grandparent i'm a young grandparent um, but I love each of you very much, and I'm Papa Jamie forever. And I want to give a shout out to my daughters who went through all the pains to have each of these children. I couldn't do it. Sorry, kids. I couldn't do it. But I love you also. And don't forget, you're all my baby girls at first, first, of course. But you gave me grandchildren, so now they're mine. Uh, but that's my thanks and gratitude. And also thanks and gratitude to all of my grandparents who are no longer with us. I loved all of them. I had great times with them growing up. And I'm trying to emulate some of your stuff with my grandkids. That's my thanks and gratitude. I like that, Ellen. How do you like that? I, I can't imagine. I'm waiting. My kids, they're a little slower than your kids, right? <laughs> so they're in their 20s now, yes. and we're just waiting. But I can't wait for that stage. Ellen, I mean, I'm really like yeah. thinking about like the shifts I'll make in my life to fit them in because I want to be involved. Right. So from a productivity wise, you know, who like I think about everything. I can't wait for those years. I am just so excited. I'm the same way. It's kind of so funny you say that. This is an organizing productivity podcast. So my one daughter started young. The other one just started two years ago. So she's in her 30s and started. So it's, it's funny. The first time around, I was starting my business. Mm -hmm. So it's like there were times I did miss a few things, but I'm a very hands on grandparent. I was always still I still. I could be tired on a plane overnight trying to fly to something, but it's funny. I was starting my business and kind of learning how to add them in or add my business in, like it's kind of like how that works. This time around with another one, it's much easier. I have it down now. I know what the mistakes were. Why should I say mistakes? Just things that didn't work out really fully back then that didn't work. And now I know kind of what does work. Uh, they're, in the, they're in the same area. So they're all in the, both, both, both are in the same area. So I now can apply certain things I didn't know then to now. So I, I kind of like that. So yeah. it's well, cool. it's like everything. We're always we're always a work in process, right? Well, that that's okay. So I, I want to that because this book, Productivity How You're Wired, is that it's not I I'm assuming it's not just this like how to, it's, it's a cure for everything. But I would say we're always editing, changing growing, moving. I mean, that's just always. We're always in motion, aren't we? Yes, always. And, you know, the second you figure out how to handle it today, it is different tomorrow, right? Yes. Or with one client, it's one way. And with another right. client, it's something else. Or one system works for this. Yet another system works better for this, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So productivity. So for the lay person who comes like I have people come in here who just love listening to people talk about organizing. Productivity is kind of it's a worst around forever, obviously, but it's now almost replacing some other words that we've used in the past, aren't we? Productivity is like the word these days, isn't it? Right. So we used to call it time management. Yes. But the bottom line is you can't manage your time. We all have seven days a week and 24 hours a day and 168 hours in a week and all that stuff. So you can't really manage it. There's nothing you could do. You could only make choices and be intentional about how to use your time. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to say, what happened to work time management? I'm like, well, that's been kind of replaced. 
language changes too. That's not only too. Language has changed too. But I will tell you, in terms of Google searches, like two thirds of my business come from people who do time management coach, and one third from productivity coach. So you and I may be ahead of the curve, but the people out there looking for me, they're looking for. They're still doing the time management. It's okay. You know, you meet people. This is all about meeting people where they're at, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why I said for lay person, like because we're like, but the time management, I'm like, no, it's it's there, but just that we're using words like productivity because yeah. because yeah. literally, productivity actually is a more accurate word. Mm -hmm. Can you explain why that's in your terms why it's a more accurate word? Well, to me, being productive is figuring out how to do everything you want to do, so there's time to do. Um, or everything you have to do so there's time to do what you want to do. So you have a fuller, more quality-driven life. I mean, to me, one of the core tenets of productivity is that it's a quality of life issue, right? So time management just kind of thinks about how you use your time. Whereas when I do productivity work with my clients, we are looking at their holistic life. You know, they may say, oh, I need help with my productivity at work. But when we dig in, it's like, why? Well, so I could t spend time with my grandkids, so I could spend time with my kids, so I can travel. So when I take the weekend off or one weekend day off, I can relax. I mean, so many people tell me that they say, you know, I'm, I, I know I have to work a day over the weekend and I spend all day Saturday laying on the sofa saying I got to get up and work so I can take tomorrow off. And then they don't. And then Saturday, Sunday comes and they're exhausted and they don't and they get to Monday and they ruin their weekend and they still didn't do catch up with their work. And can you really catch up with your work? Probably not. So I see that with a lot of clients too. A lot of work has to be done. I, I'll say to them, if you work seven days a week, 24 hours a day, could you get everything done that you're expected to do? And they say no. And that is really, they're hiring me to figure out how, but Part of the work is understanding that what they may be expected to do with work, with their life, with all their obligations yeah. is yeah. just impossible. So then, and only then can they, once they have that awareness, can they scale back and understand it's not about time. It's about making one, understanding who I am, what I need, what's important, and then making choices about what my goals are, what my priorities are, intentions, like an intentional way of living. And like, I want to live a healthy life. I want to uh, see my family. I want to travel, not just, I want to make this much money or I want to have yeah, this many yeah. clients. So it's a very holistic approach, but that's really what they're looking for. So whereas time management is very narrow, productivity is encompassing their lives in a much more um, purposeful way. Well, you said something that is very important, knowing who you are. Because I try to tell, you know, because I'm also, I'm a, I'm a certified life coach in five areas. And, mm -hmm. stuff. and I know that a lot of times we start from center, I always coach from center. And wow. that's something that sometimes is the hardest for people because you have to, you should accept who you are, whatever it is at the moment. Right. And maybe right now you are not that motivated as much as you want to be. Maybe you, maybe your brain is wired this way at the moment. And so you just think, I mean, like you have to accept that I do my best work first thing in the morning. I know right. I know my time. They say you should have to worry, but I just know for me, sorry, sorry, you know, Ellen, I just, I just, I can't, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it in my time. My best work's first thing in the morning. And so you can go, okay, I can help you with that. Right. That's the kind of thing, right? But it's just, you have to be, as you know, as a coach, you want to meet people where they are. We want to leverage their strengths. Yes. We want to help them um, be their best self, figure out what their best conditions are. It's not just about time, it's about sleep and what else they need to do. And do they need to um, take care of emergency email and um, reviewing anything before they launch into deep work or do you need to exercise first or do you be do better exercising in the evening or, you know, what, what essential structure is, is the word I use? What, when, what are your winning conditions for you to do your best work for you? Your winning conditions are to do your work, your deep work, your focused work, your high cognitive load work in the morning before life blows up. For me, 
I want to do that at like four in the afternoon or five yeah. when I'm awake and I'm in the zone for me. When all like when my coaching is done or when my emails are done and I can clear the decks and I have nothing like pinging my head, that's when I do my best work. Me too. So it's just really about figuring out what works for you. I did a, I did a thing for my brother. He, he knows this later. He knows the beginning. Um, but I, I uh, he would take his shoes off the door. We lived together, the front door. Now, my brother was a size 15 shoe. So when you leave a shoe at the door, it's not like it's just some little tiny shoe. I wear a size 14, so I can't even talk. But I would trip over these shoes, like literally, like seriously, almost break a tooth or whatever, because this shoe is so big. And so I screamed out and stuff, but I said, wait a minute. Let me let me let me go into my coaching organizing mind and my whole thing of taking bad habits, turning into the work, making work for you. Always my little thing about that. So I said, I go, JR, I'm gonna put this little um, put your shoes on this little um this rack right here by the door. I'll put it right here. And you just put it because you don't walk in the house with shoes on. I said, it's perfect. It's be right by the door. It's off to the side, it's not in the way. He does that. Yay, good job. But you know what I mean? But it's like it wasn't like Go in your room. And I I, I, said, I had to, he likes taking his shoes off at front. He doesn't walk in the right. house with shoes on, which I totally get. And so, like, what can I do that could just work for him, make it not much more work for him? That's meeting him where he is. His bandwidth is I take my shoes off right here. So, this is exactly like I, my book is uh, divided into three parts. The first part is understand. The second is creating your own systems. The third is applying it to different things in life. So this is exactly what we talk about in the understand part of the book. It's really, I was going to call it the psychology of time, but because I'm not a psychologist, oh. I did not want to go there. No, you know, yeah, no, yeah. I didn't want to cross that line. But so what we do is we um, introduce some concepts. And we like talk about those things that are emotionally hard to talk about, like procrastination and burnout and perfectionism. But then we also identify something I've developed, which is called structure preference. Okay. How much structure do you, James, okay. Bob, Joe, Mary, Beth, whoever, need to do your best work to be in your winning condition zone, right? So we do that, and I explain this, of course, in the book, but I give you a little quiz. Okay. And it's a little bit of Myers-Briggs. It's a little bit of oh, okay. Okay. order. So we dig into all that. And then, um, as I explain, you really end up with you thrive in high structure, moderate structure, or low structure. And like a startup is low structure. And that personality that does really well in a startup doesn't do really well in that middle zone and that moderate because they need that routine. They, they're, they're good at inventing systems and they're good at being up in high structure following routine and process, but that middle zone is a little gray, okay? So my first career was in the hotel business. I would open hotels. I would create, I would come up with systems, processes. I would hire my team. We would put it all together before the doors were even open. I mean, that's low structure, right? Yeah. Then the doors would be open, right? But because you're so, you can't ever get to high structure because you never, the guest is variable. The weather is variable. Yes. If you're at an airport hotel, you might get a plane of 200. You can never, 200 passengers walking in the lobby, you can never be high structure. Yeah. So I would not like that modern structure. So I would just leave and go open another hotel. So I opened like five hotels in like nine years. Yeah. But now I'm looking back at it. Now I know what I did. I didn't like low, moderate structure. So I need high structure as a business owner. I have my systems, my processes. My business is on autopilot. It's on routine. That fits me as an intuitive thinker, a high structure person. Now, I bet you you're a little bit more creative than that. Yes, I am. If, yes, I am. You, if I were to give you the systems I create for myself, you would explode. You would say, this is too restrictive. I'm in a straight jacket. Yes, this. Yes, so <laughs> I'm going to, if you were my client, we would be creating moderate structure systems. Now, all I do is lay that groundwork. So now you understand, oh, that's why my boss likes it this way. And I like it this way. Or that's why my partner likes it this way. Or my brother likes it this way. And I like it this way. 
once you get that, then as we go through just different systems and tools, I then in the middle part of the book, the create section, I say, if you like low structure preference, try this, start here. If you like moderate, start here. If you like high, start here. You might be moderate high, you might be moderate low, but it's just a starting point. Mm -hmm. So when you're planning out your goals and intentions, because if everything's important, nothing's important, we have to really identify what you want to spend your time on, right? Yeah. So what yeah. I would do with a low structure person would be a real quick 10 minute exercise. Whereas a high structure person, we figure out their priorities, their goals, their air, life areas, and then I'd send them home with homework or field work or whatever. And they'd fill out, I want to do this this quarter and this this quarter. If I gave that to you, you'd look at me and say, I'm not doing that. But maybe you'd just be good with that um, snapshot of your planning map. So that's what the whole middle section of the book is saying. Okay, let's plan out how you want to budget your time. Let's plan out what your essential structures are. Let's plan out how you manage a to-do list. Let's plan out your planning because planning is really important if you don't want to be reactive, right? People say, I just am so tired of putting out fires. And they say, I don't like to plan. That feels too restrictive. But then you kind of show them how they could plan in a less structured way. And like one client said to me last week, that planning is the ultimate in self-care. And it was such a beautiful tournament. So anyway, all of those things, I, I shared tables. I make tables and you could just say, oh, I'm moderate structure. Let me read. Oh, that doesn't fit. Maybe for this, I want a little bit more structure. Ooh, I want to try this. And then, of course, as coaches, we know everything's an experiment. Yes. So you start there, you experiment with it. And then what you were talking about before with, let's say I did my time map of how I wanted to spend my time. It's just like a vision board or a yeah. time budget. Oh, yeah. And if you look in the book, like there's charts. I have tons of charts like on everything. Oh, good. You know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, so, and then I also have some supplemental tools, see charts okay. that you could get online that show you in color because sometimes you need, you need more yes. than this, right? Yes. So I have a color PDF. Oh, okay. I have your worksheets that you could do from a Google Doc. I, I have our, you know, like t I call them time tools. I have worksheets you could print out if you want to do them in, per in person. But anyway, I could change my time map. Let's say I, in the summer, well, I'm in Florida and I'm in South Florida and it's so freaking hot here that I can't exercise outside in the summer. So my schedule is different. But as soon as October 15th happens, hurricane season is over, it's beautiful. I will be riding my bike. I will be yes. walking. Yes. I might, you know, try to get little 5K going training. Yes. Yes. So I will shift my time map because then when I want to get outside and exercise will be different than when I have to do it inside. So yes, it's always a work in process, but you can't figure out how to do it until you understand who you are. Yeah, no, it's you're, you, you, you know me. I, I am. I was with our buddy Regina Lark the other day. We had we had. Oh. Uh, I saw that picture on Facebook. You guys yeah. are we always get together and talk. Uh, she gets me too. I get her, and she gets me. We always run off like this. Way. But I'm very much a left brain, right brain works together. I yes, am. A, I am. I am a creative. I'm a. But I'm also structured. I'm both. You totally are. Absolutely. Yeah. So you get me. No, I'm saying you're getting me. So I'm like, you're right. I can't have anything super restrictive. I can't. I don't, I don't love systems. I have systems in place, but if it seems restrictive or too, um, or just too strict for me or too whatever, it, I just, I turn off. I just you sabotage it and you'll change it for the sake yeah. of change or you won't stick with it. And all of a sudden it's not serving you. You're right. And That's you know right. what? You bring up another really great point when you bring up Regina. So Regina and I served on the national board together. When she chaired the education committee and I was her board liaison, and then she came on the board, she and I were the most extraordinary work pair because she's this catalyst of like just yes. ready fire. And I'm like, ready, aim, 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 aim. <laughs> and she brought out the best in me and I brought out the best in her and we could work together and together, like we, I, I would say our Venn diagram 
is 50% a hundred, you know, overlap and then 50%, 25% her gifts and 25% mine. So even if, and I talk about this a lot in the book, even if there's something that's harder for you to partner with somebody, yeah. find a colleague, find a coach, find a friend to talk it through with and figure it out and like, let them fill in what's hard for you or let them push. Like I need to be pushed. Like I needed a book coach to get this book out the door. If I was left to my own devices, it'd be 10 years because I'd be waiting for it to be perfect. And well, we know there's no such thing as perfect. Nope, there isn't. So, so that's really important to say there's nothing wrong with me, Yeah. but um, how do I leverage my strengths? How do I minimize my challenges? And I go, I, we talk about it. I want to show you one other thing. So at the very me. beginning, at the very beginning is this little this little chart here. I don't know if you've seen this before, is but it's a, it's a quote. Do you want to read it? Please read, it, read it. I have my glasses on, so please read it. Okay. I see it really everyone, everyone is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing it is stupid. That's right. I, yeah, that's right. I heard that before. I've heard that before, yes. So sometimes it's attributed to Albert Einstein, but I couldn't guarantee that 100%. So it says author unknown, but... Yeah. Really, that's what it's about. I have a client that, um, I mean, you're in you're in LA, so this isn't unusual, but I was in Philly for 25 years. And she's a, a playwright and a composer, and she she hadn't she got an Emmy, right? Amazing. So yeah. she writes she writes musicals, children's musicals about anti-bullying and peace. Oh wow, and okay. All kinds of DEI issues. I mean, she's she's just terrific, except She won't mind me saying this. Okay. You can't trouble. remember to put the business charges on the American Express. Oh, that, that kind of, yes, that kind of, yes, yes. Right? Yes. But I say to her, look at all these billions of things you can do. We'll figure out how to separate your, yeah. your business from your right. personal charges. Right. We can figure that out. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, she shouldn't feel bad about that because her gifts are so expensive. No, you're I right. Mean, in LA, I run across that all the time. That, that you're right. Here in Hollywood, I run across it all the time. I have clients who's like, seriously, they're amazing actors, amazing singers, amazing producers. Yet they're like, I don't, I, I, I missed my my lights almost turned off because I forgot to pay the bill because I don't know where the bill is. And like, your lights are almost turned. Like you have the money. It's like you just that you just not organized. Yeah, that that kind of stuff just doesn't work for. They don't worry about. They're busy over here doing that. Um, right. Yes. So I if your dreams could do the bills, they wouldn't be the creative, brilliant geniuses yes, bringing yes, to the exactly. world that we need. So that's why they need to find a different way to handle that. Yes. Oh, exactly. No, exactly. That's true. And I said, and everybody, everybody learns differently. Also, some of us are visual, quick learners. Some are need it written down, need several times to get it. Nothing wrong with that either. But I, I want to go back to because this is very, this is very important to getting any book on any kind of organizing and productivity or coaching somebody. Because you said it in the beginning, and I can believe this completely all of my heart, you have to come from yourself. I always say, if you're thinking about getting this book, productivity, how you're wired, that's your first step. That means mm -hmm. that you're, you're starting to look at yourself as somebody who wants to help yourself become a better self, right? But the problem is, and I want you to talk about this a little bit too. A lot of our clients have a hard time sometimes first switching that the language of themselves. I'm so bad. I'm so this. I'm so sorry. Like, I'll never be this. I'll never be that. I guess a lot of it because we're trying to get them to, to own who they are. Sometimes it's hard. At first, it's hard getting them there. And I want mm -hmm. you to talk about that a little bit because I know it can be a little hard. But I love that you keep bringing that. It's like, it has to come from you accepting who you are at that moment. Well, you know, when you talk about that, I think about perfectionism because all our lives in school, we were raised to get that, to strive for like that hundred percent with the yes. smiley yes. face yes. and you didn't want a red mark. We were reinforced from infancy yeah. to go for perfect, right? Yeah. And that's what a sin. I mean, what a, like nobody's, like nothing is perfect. And then and that's so paralyzing. And, you know, our, I, I really think it's rooted in our school systems yeah, and yeah. what is expected of a, of a five-year-old or an eight-year-old. And 
you know, the teacher's pet was the one that got the work in on time and that crossed their T's and dotted their I's and spelled things. And they weren't the, if you happen to have a different mind, you are not valued for your strengths. So the very first thing is to, to have the awareness. So in coaching, I was trained, every change begins with awareness. If you don't have awareness, you can't change. No, yeah. Okay. So here's the awareness from the group. Your great, really great point. Oh, the way that our society, our society's expectations may not be what's really best for humanity. Because it was you were pigeonholed into the system for having 25 little kids in a classroom. And the teacher had to survive, right? And the teacher wanted everyone to conform and everyone to do it the teacher's way. Well, who's to say that that was the right way? That was just how the teacher survived. I mean, I've just become very cynical, like just thinking, like, why are they saying that? What's what's thinking behind it? So now the, um, the I, I'm just thinking that I had a, one of my kids, Alex, was... Alex was such a wiggly kid, right? He had the sensory integration stuff. And so he is getting a master's at Columbia right now. He is not yeah. a slacker, right? Okay, okay. all right. He's not he a was, slacker, not at all. When he was a, when he was seven, you would have thought that, oh my God, what what a worse, terrible child, because he would move around in his seat and he would wiggle. And the teacher put him right next to the fish tank. So he was always afraid he was going to knock the fish tank over. All she had to do was put his chair somewhere else, right? right? Right. So, and then, and then when he was in fourth grade, they had this project of doing paper bag puppets. Okay. Okay. So they had to make a paper bag puppet of somebody they admired. Okay. And Alex made it on John F. Kennedy. Oh, okay. Wow, that's okay. not a fourth grader. Yeah. And he couldn't cut out the the neck and the tie, he just doesn't have great fine motor skills. It's just okay. not gonna it, right? Yeah. And he started crying a little bit. And I said, Alex, this is the last time you cry because you cannot cut a straight line. Yeah. This is not, it doesn't define who you are. No. You will have somebody else who you work with that can cut that straight line. This is not gonna be the difference you make in, in the world. Yeah. And it really helped. Now, if the if he if he didn't have a parent like me or a situation like me, maybe he would have grown up feeling less than because yeah, yeah. what do you mean you can't sit still? Because maybe the parent isn't empowered with the knowledge to think that there's another way. So I think it starts from a young age, and I think the biggest thing we should can do is be kind to ourselves and self compassionate, and um, treat ourselves like we would treat our best friend. And say, wait a second, I have these other gifts. I don't have to be good at everything. I don't have to do everything perfectly. How can I be the best version of myself? And then when you start reading the book, you're going to feel that acceptance. And you're going to feel like, oh, here's a way out. I see it. I can do this. It's going to be okay. Yeah, I, I love I love that. I do. I love that. And so who is this book for? That's a good question. Oh, that's really that. interesting. Yeah. So like, when when I work with my book coach, she's like, um, who who's your ideal reader? And yeah, I said, exactly. high, yeah. high achieving business professionals who know there have to be an easier way, right? Yes. Because really, those are the ones a lot of people I work with are high achieving business professionals who call me and say, I know there has to be a better way. I can't figure it out. Help. <laughs> yes. But then as I expanded that, yeah. It's also for global creatives who want to be accepted for who they are. I also think that every professional organizer, productivity consultant, and coach should read this because they're all telling their clients, do it this way. I don't want them to say do it this way because if their way isn't my way or your way or the, the highway, Ugh. then we're, we're harming, we're doing harm. So I, I would like every person who gives advice therapists on time management, productivity yeah. goals, living your life 
to read the book. Um, it is also for anyone who just wants to be more intentional about how they spend their time. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you a thousand, hundred thousand percent. When some says, people say, do it this way because it's my way and I find it. I'm always like, I don't say those words. Those words are my vocabulary. I'll say, we could try it this way. We have several ways you can try this. Mm -hmm. And then I, I used to try to listen to my client. Very, you, have, you have to be present for your client. I believe right. that with 10,000% of my heart. That's how I'm with my interviews. That's how I am with my acting. That's how I am with everything that I do. And you know me. I've been always very present on in our interviews. You know how I am. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to the client, you have to read their body language. You have to see their demeanor. You have to hear their mood and hear their words. Sometimes they're telling you what will not work for them or telling you what could work for them. Isn't that true? Right. Yes. And that's, you know, I know that when you do anything you do with another human being that's why you're successful is because you're not saying do it my way you are meeting that person where they're at and from your heart trying to work with them so we you can figure out with them collaboratively how to best solve their challenge their obstacle remove that obstacle so they can be their best selves yeah how can I use this book? How should this book be? Every, every organizing book is used differently. Some people are like, just turn any page and here you go. Or some people will say, start from beginning to end. So how can I use this book most effectively? Um, so I'm going to say there is no wrong way. Okay. I'm going to say that if you are totally intrigued by the email chapter, so the the okay. like I said, the first part of the book is understand. The second part of the book is create. And that's where we're coming up with systems to fit you. And the third part of the book is application. So I have a section on, I call it time matters, like how you can, how you can time management stuff really save yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Then I have a section on email and I have a section, a chapter on working home, remote and hybrid and how you can set yourself up for success and a couple chapters on leadership, one on leadership, from a productivity perspective, and then one on leadership skills. So if you say, I am just dying to read the email chapter or the leadership chapter, go read it. Okay. You'll be inspired to go back and catch more details later. Yeah. If you're, I, you know, I think this is really about how you're wired. How you wired? Yeah, I get that. But I have this, yes. I have a high need for order. Okay. I never start anywhere but at the beginning. Okay. Because Got I it. Build and I want to read methodically and I want to understand. Whereas I have plenty of colleagues and friends and perhaps you, James, who don't want that rigidity. So you start where you are and you go back and you fill it. Yes. Now, yes. I would say that you want to read chapter two and three. Okay. Which is the um, how you're wired chapter and then also the chapter on um, so the second chapter is discover your productivity style and the third chapter is productivity, stress, and flow. So okay. I think those are really foundational. I mean, everything in the first section is foundational, but I think that's if you had to like be say like what really matters. And then section two, page through it, pick out what works for you, what you're curious about. And section three, the same thing. So either follow it or don't follow it, read what you want. You can't go wrong. I yeah. mean, lots yeah. of information here. And there's a couple times, like when I talk about planning, I think I've repeated the same concept three times because I've gotten very, very clear. Yeah. Learning how to plan is crucial to figuring out how to get rid of that feeling of I can't get ahead. Yeah. Never know what to do next. I feel like I'm drinking from a fire hose. There's no way I'm overstressed and can't figure this out. So I might repeat it. So don't worry about it if it's important. Either it's referenced where you're going to go check and in the ebook, it's yeah. linked. You can go link to it and read a section yeah. or you'll get there when you're ready to receive it. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm a person, you, 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 again, you get me, where I can start somewhere and then follow up and go back. Mm -hmm. I'm not, my little friends really are, they're structural. They're very much like beginning page one to page 100. They can't, they can't do it any other way. They just, they just can't. It's a terrible burden for me. 
I don't it's even a, think they'll tell. That, that high need for order, it's like, man, Ellie, can't you just start in the middle once? So whatever it is, we want to be something. That's so interesting, right? I mean, it's, it's interesting how we just approach things. Um, it's, it's all the same. We're trying to get to the We're still all swimming upstream to get to the same destination. Just that there, again, there's different roads. And that's what, that's my problem sometimes with certain shows on productivity and organizing stuff. That just, it's very much like you do it this I always praise them for getting a show. I know Hollywood, not easy. But to have a show where it's like you do it this way, that's it. It's your best success in life. And people tell me, they go, well, James, I'm coming to you because that way didn't work for me. Exactly. I'm sure you've exactly. got it too. Like, they're like, well, I'm, I saw that. But yeah, I don't want to do it that way. And they're like, well, you well, don't have to do it's that so way. funny, right? right? So so the shows today, you're decanting your cereal <laughs> in the pantry, right? <laughs> now, you have to remember, I started my business as a professional organizer in 2001. That's a long, That's a long, long time. time. That is a long time. My clients, our goal was to put the box of cereal in the pantry. Wow. Just get it where right. it belongs so you can right. find it when you need it. <laughs> so if I was sitting there with them telling you, did not that it's wrong because there are people that right. love that. Yes. But those people can afford to hire someone to come in and decant their cereal. Right. It's not, it's more interior organization, design organization, as it is more than that. That's what we're seeing now versus a better quality of life survival. How do I get, how do I have time to figure out if I need cereal? How do I get the time to go shopping and get cereal? How do I leave the cereal? How do I take the cereal out of the bag? and get in the pantry so my kids can find it. Yes. And then how do I teach them to put it back? So when they want it tomorrow, it's there. Oh, and please let's have them roll it up and put the little clip on it so it doesn't get stale, please. But that's the stretch. That's the stretch I'm going for. So it's all different. You so have to I, I love it. Cause I started, to, I started in 2009. So I mean, I'm 13 years or almost 14 years ago. And you're right, it wasn't, it just, it seems fancier these days. I see it's the same, almost the same tenets of getting fixing putting things in place, but it's a little fancier now. And you're like, my early pantries weren't about getting going to container store and getting matching things to pour. Like it literally was. I just want to make sure I can fit it in here and it's easy to grab. You're right. When you have kids, and I've had kids, you've had kids. It's not about pretty a lot of times. Like you make it, you make it look nice. But it's about accessibility and it's how easy it's going to be. Because first thing in the morning, you know how it is. Everybody's running around and you want eggs and you want breakfast. And it's like you, you, you don't have time for, for cutesy cutesy a lot of times. Um, so I'm laughing because it's reminding me that back yeah, back then, and you know further than I do, but even before okay. 2009, it was like that. But if you are the kind of person that you it helps you manage your stress to have things beautifully displayed yes, and laid. That's true too. Then that's great. Yeah. And if that's your priority and you like, there are times that organizing is a great stress management relief for me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I did that. Oh, yeah. So by taking the time to like, just put things out. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm burnt out. Let me go organize the junk drawer. Yeah. So it kind of diffuses. It's a stress management yeah. technique. It is. So other people aren't like that, but so if it makes you feel good and that's how you want to spend your time, more power to you. This oh, yeah. is all I think a lot is how we manage our stress and what makes us feel good. That's true. That's true. And some of my clients uh, would type that don't like appliances on their countertops. They like them hidden. So that was a very interesting, my first that was a very interesting tactic of, oh, so we got to make room for your toaster and your slow cooker and your blender you don't want them on top of your you're like oh, okay so it's like yes i learned a lot, a lot of that stuff too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is it is i mean it literally is meaning where they are i mean and this book so this book is a self-help book of sorts right or how or how would you describe it i would definitely i wrote it as a self-help book i you know i only have so many hours in my week right and there's only so many one-on-one -on -one clients I can see. And I wrote it, I wrote it for two purposes. I wrote it one, so anybody could pick up that book 
and help themselves. Yeah. But I yeah. also wrote it so the professionals who were out there helping were not doing harm and could help most effectively. Okay. So, but that. regardless, it is definitely written for the person receiving, because let's say you're the, the, the coach reading the book, yeah. I'm writing it to you. So yeah. you can understand yourself because if you don't can't feel it and understand it for yourself, you're never going to be able to embody that and share it with somebody else. So it is directly written for the consumer, the reader to create the life they want for themselves. I do. Productivity for how you're wired is the book. Ellen Fay is the name. That's an E at the end. Show the book, girl. Show the book. Well, this is my proof copy. The the only one real one I yeah, have. I know it's right back there. I know it's back there. Right there. Right. But yeah. well, you can see, I'm like totally like saying, oh, I want to show this chart. Already having it I next to it. me when I'm with a client, I'll say, oh, look at this. See how the difference is here? And they'll say, but um, productivity for how you're wired. It's on Amazon. It's right now in Kindle and in print in the book. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's 293 pages, but it's got tons of charts. Yeah. So it's not yeah. like dense reading. Yeah. Um, again, the supplemental tools. I will do it as an audio book. Um, oh. I'm going to record it myself because there's a lot of nuance. Somebody can't do it for me. So I know it's just the way I am. But you know, when you ever listen, do you ever listen to a Brene Brown book on? I love Brene. Um, I love her first of all. Yeah, how she she doesn't do it exactly like the she writes it and she explains and she says, now that's what I need to do too. Like you know, I want to be like Brene Brown, right? That's all small expectation. That's all. <laughs> oh, so small, but Brene Brown changed my life. But I'm like you said that I go. I like that she changed. She said a sentence that changed my life forever, and that was. A, a I'm gonna say. I want, I want to say the sentence to people. Like, this sentence changed my life. She said it years ago on Oprah. It changed my life. It did. She said, the definition of forgiveness is giving up the hope the past can be any different. And I was like, yes, 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 yes. It literally changed my life personally and professionally. And I said, if I ever meet Benet Brown, if I ever meet her, I'm going to tell her that sentence literally changed my life where I wept as she said it and something clicked. I'm a big crier anyway. And so we clicked. You know it's so important. I want you to say it again and I want you to say okay. it a little so everyone can hear it. The definition of forgiveness is giving up the hope the past could be any different. And she's right. I was holding mm -hmm. on to things from my father, my mother, my grandmother, the person down the street, the ex over here, that you know, if they say they just say this one thing. But like it doesn't change it. it doesn't, everything's still the everything happened happened. Right. And just like when she when she said it, it just clicked. And that's 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 Brene Brown's genius and compassion and that's how she is. And I just and that just and I just said that one that that phrase I put it on TikTok. It's on my TikTok page and it went viral. Um, I gave her all the credits. It was from Brene Brown, folks. It was from Oprah as well. And that just, it seriously is something that can be applied here too. Right. And productivity, as you read her book, as you get her book, uh, Ellen Faye's book, you can read it and go, you know, I have to forgive myself. I'm right. in this situation because we're I'm in this situation. The, we are not changing the past. No. But let's create a future that you're, that you're proud of and that you're happy with. Yes. That's what it is. And that's why I think about organization. I'm always telling people, you got here because you got here. Whatever. That's, that's, who, okay. We'll work on that so you don't continue it. But like, don't stop beating yourself up. We stop beating yourself up on. I just, I just. Oh my God! I only ten years, and I'm like, and just stop it. Yeah, it happened. Things happen. Things go. On. We all go through stuff. You know that stop. pile of papers in your in your office or your home office that you said I have to go through for 10, 15 years, or those six piles. Declare paper amnesty. Put it in a box, put a date on yes. it, and put it on the shelf and get it out of your space. Yes. And start fresh today. Yes. I agree with that. Completely. I agree with that completely. I do. I, I say, I just, we're, no one is harder on, our, on us than ourselves. And that's why I keep trying to break that down. I'm trying to break that. At every show I do, I try to break that down. We got to let that go. 
Well, the other the other Brene Brown brilliance is about perfection. I think she wrote the book on the gifts of yes. imperfection. And and when I share that with my clients, that you know, being perfect is not about yielding a hundred percent perfect product. It's about you're worried that someone's going to judge you as less than Brene Brown. All of a sudden, when you realize, you know, this doesn't have to be perfect. The one time, man, the, the productivity time management thing is like, there are, everything doesn't need to be done at 100%. Everything doesn't have 100% value. So if you look at Pareto's principle, which is the 80-20 rule, I could get to 80% effectiveness in 20% of the time. So I could write a very good email in two minutes, but to make a perfect email in 10 minutes... I have to say, you know what, very good or above average 80% is good enough for my emails. Because if I made every email perfect, two Ugh. things. One, Ugh. all I would do with my life is email. Right, and, yes, that's true. Right, yeah. so I have more important work to do. I have really, I say, this that is a low value task. My high value task is where I want to invest my time. My low value task just I've had to train myself to write it, read it once and hit send. And if it's not perfect because somebody judges me because I'm an apostrophe in the wrong place or I spelled something or it's not perfect um, grammar wise. Oh, well, that is not my gift anyway. You know, there's going to be other things I do. Yes. Yeah. If I get my point across, that's the whole point. No, you, you know, you know what I'm talking about. No, I, I do. No. Yeah, that's funny. No, Brene Brown, her perfection thing made me take the word perfect out of my vocabulary. I thought I don't, I don't add that. And anyway, I don't do perfect perfection. That, that whole word and any alliteration of it's out of my vocabulary. It just doesn't. So I want to do a Brene Brown really good. Yeah, I know. So we should, I... One day, one day you'll be able to, your listeners can listen to that too. But for now, yes. yes. I mean, Kindle yes. if you want to read it. But I think this is one of those books you want to feel in your hand. And at the back of every chapter, there's it says takeaways and actions. Oh, good. Okay. There's room for you to write your takeaways. Oh, and I actions. like that. I like that. So, yes. Like, what is the key point I want to remember? What action do I want to take? Because you don't remember from time to time. So there I'm trying go. to facilitate you getting a great experience from the book. So. Yeah. Get the book. Amazon. Uh, you don't have to say run, don't walk. We don't have to. Let's go on your tablet. Go on your phone. I might do iPhone, go on your computer, la desktop, laptop, go get it. Ellen Fane, that's with the E at the end. Um, make sure you go get this book, Productivity for How You're Wired. Get it, go get it. Be, what's, what I was going to say, um, be there or be square. That's what I was going to say. Like, old phrase. That's there, right. Ellen, hey, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, James. I always love being with you. You're same such here, a shining light. Same here, same here. And everybody, I am a super organizer. You go to superorganizer.com. You can go to uh, a lot of help.com, lot with two T's, my last name, dot com for um, my own rates and things that I do. And of course, I have my channels. I have my rate, my show, which is this show. Like I said, almost gone. On. We're heading towards 400 episodes. I'm very excited. And, I, and it's just crazy. It's crazy. Um, and you can find it on any streaming platform service. It's Apple, Google, Deezer, Spotify, iHeartRadio, everywhere, and the YouTube version. I am one of the few gentlemen of my persuasion that has an online network. Yes, I wore 50 shows on my network. Thank you. I don't want each other. Uh, over 50 shows on my network, which is JLJ Mini on YouTube. You can find this show and many of our colleagues who are on, been on the show also. Check them out. There's some great content. They're awesome. I love smart women. I do. I love my smart women. They're smart. They are here to help you. They are doing God's work. I'm telling you, organized productivity is not not everybody is born with this, but it can be taught and it can be absorbed. That's the number one thing. It's not some special service that only a few people can do. It's for everyone. And Ellen and I both are going to let you know that having a more productive, organized life really is good, folks. It really is. I wouldn't be doing this business for the last 14 years if I didn't believe that. I believe with all my heart. It is a, it's something that could really be beneficial to you and the folks around you and your health, your inner health, your mental health, your physical health, it really can change your life. It really can. And I'm James Lott Jr. And we'll see you next time.